So what's up everybody? It's me. It's me. True Star Screamer. And we are looking at something very, very cool that has a lot of neat between the lines implications. This is Odious, The Living Curse. And this is an independent toy production put together uh, by Unparalleled Universe. You can see his logo down here, here on the back. Um, Walking Global, uh, this is their Walking Globala line, I guess. I'm not sure who that's who we worked with, but this is, this is just so cool on so many levels. You know, uh, Unparalleled Universe is a prominent YouTuber, and he does some excellent stop motion, excellent reviews. I am so freaking jealous of his setup on there. I can never get my lights to look like his, and, um, but yeah, this is, a, this was like a passion project of his. I would, I unfortunately don't know the full backstory of who he was working with, with what factory and all, but um, just the fact that this is one of us, per se, albeit one of the higher echelon ones, getting his dream out is neat. That in itself is cool. Um, thing is, though, this is also a really good figure. Uh, the box is awesome. Um, I got mine from Big Bad Toy Store. You can also order it directly from... Um, Parallel Universe's website. Uh, fun fact, they are actually going to be doing a uh, exclusive version of this fit character over at um, Legion's Con, which sadly I cannot make. Go say hi to Mike for me if you go. But um, yeah, let's talk about the figure. It's, well, actually, go ahead and talk about the presentation. Open it up here. As you can see, everything is in the box. Oh, there goes my hel official Hella Dope crates. Dang it. But this is how he looks in the box. Um, there's some neat little, like, faux newspaper articles in here, but let's get him out and talk about this toy. This is Odious out of the package, just how he comes. So I haven't changed any of the hands or anything on here. And I'm going to say this right now, you know, even if you have no clue about what this is, if you're somebody who collects something like Rumble Society, for example, you know, someone who just wants something unique in your collection, that's this is it right here uh, there's a lot just in the basics of it all that honestly makes me smile uh, the clothing itself it's it is a thin fabric it is a thin fabric but because of that this is all wired so being thin it's not he super heavy and he can I can you know fold it up there and make it look like it's walking in the wind for example so that I like uh, the details, uh, this design on it, everything is great. Uh, put the hood down here. You know, it's got base base color painting on here. You know, the skin, a little bit of uh, dry brush or wash on there. Uh, no eyes, teeth are painted. But I, I like the fact we actually get his lip painted on here. And then the beard itself, or the the hair itself has a nice highlight to it. And that's over everything. Um, Got the faux denim jeans again. All this is a thin fabric. Uh, you can, uh, but what I like about that is nothing. It doesn't hinder anything. And when I move him around, I don't feel nervous. I don't feel like anything's going to be tearing. So that is a great thing. Uh, articulation. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, articulation is. Better than a lot of my Mezco, so this is a Mezco-esque figure. Uh, there's one interesting design choice that I'm... I don't want to say Etheon, I get why they did it, but you just have to keep your eye on it. And we'll get to that. Uh, and that involves his ankles. Uh, heads on a ball joint so I can get all the confused looks, you know, the little subtle nuances to it. Um, I love this. Uh, there is a uh, butterfly joint in the shoulder. There is... Is there? Um, there is a bicep swivel, and again, I don't feel like the jacket's restricting anything. Uh, double jointed elbow in here, uh, wrist. It's got the in and out joint, and it twists there. Uh, you can open up his shirt here, and we can look at the body. Uh, okay, on the ab crunch, I want to say that it's okay, and um, I could probably get in there and Dremel that. We'll see if I want to. But I do like that it's on the ball, so I get the twist there as well as the waist, so that gives me a lot of fluid articulation. 
Dude, that guy's got some abs. Uh, there is a thigh swivel. You know, can kick out, double joint and knees. My only... Oh, and we got a toy joint. A toy joint. A toe joint here. Not super deep, but we have one. This is my only criticism on the articulation. Is we've got a ball joint. You know, a, a basic uh, kind of a ball joint. I mean, we still got the ankle pivot, but the ankle here, sometimes, if you don't realize it, especially with the cuff down, you can have it almost like this, if that makes sense. So the leg doesn't feel natural when you twist it around. So just got to keep a mind on that. I know it's weird when I describe this on camera, but when you have this in person, it will make sense. But as far as posing goes, he gets some very, very fluid motion here and that is awesome uh, uh, speaking of awesome just because of here i do like how the hoodie is velcroed so like i said i can open it up but when i close it up it looks it looks clean it looks clean and these drawstrings do kind of these are good the hoodie itself has some nice drawstrings to it but let's talk about the accessories because he comes with a great amount which you right there Odious has a ton of hands, uh, like un unnecessarily awesomely amount of hands, but they all can be, well, are fun to use. I mean, I'm not going to go through you know, left and right. Oh, everything's got a left and right. Splayed hand, clawed hand, gripping hand, punching hand, and then pointing hand, but one for each side. So this gives a whole lot of dynamics of how you want to display him, photograph him. He also has this uh, club that has basically like a simian, skull, a silver simian skull on it, which is probably his old skull. And it involves the fiction. I, I, the fiction is very, very open-ended on this. Uh, but again, beautiful silver paint on here. I like that the bindings are painted, and there's a little bit of metal here on the end here. But what I really love are the head options. By default, he has this really nice snarling face. Then you get this thinking, hmm, face. Hmm, you know. We also have a... Uh-huh, really, like, do, are you sure you want to do that? Then you've got just the stoic, grim look to it, like, and then finally, my favorite is the, huh, face. I mean, seriously, this just, just screams zoinks. In the packaging itself, it says to uh, heat up, heat them up with either the boiling method or a hairdryer, probably to pop things out, so I'd probably be very cautious. So as I flip things through the rest of this review, I might switch them, things out with the hands. Um, I also want to point out, again, that simian skull, just to put those together. Uh, this baby, either a skull of old encounter, because he's an old spirit, or his previous body. And that's the, that's the thing. According to like the stories I've been reading, he is the living curse. He takes over the body of those who shed their blood on his gravestone. So, I mean, does one sacrifice yourself and then have Odious possess yourself? Is it like Pumpkinhead, where he kind of takes over? Um, there's not really much of a f fiction on here, but you can do a... It, it, it's like, okay, you, someone else, you become Odious. You know, you, you want to get vengeance for your family getting killed. You find his gravestone, slit your wrist on there, and all of a sudden, Odious possesses you. And you are now cursed. You know, it's kind of like a, you know, he's a very Bigfoot-esque, Wendigo-esque. So, um, I guess, I don't know, like, the story. Like, is this just one Odious? Or there have been very Odious, you know, various Odiouses. Um, I'd love to get more fiction out of this, to be honest. Because there's just a lot of neat concepts that this could be. You know, I love the Dresden Files, and this guy seems a very urban fantasy-like character, you know, um, or even Hellboy-esque in a way. So, um, I hope we get more. I hope there's a comic. I hope there's some kind of novella or something. Um, I gotta throw that on Twitter <laughs> just to see what what how uh, Unparalleled Universe responds.
Now, another neat accessory is a full, um, a full hoodie. I don't get these tears here. Maybe it might make sense when I put them on. Does he have the tears in here? Uh, uh That's interesting. But, uh, if you notice with the trench coat here, it's actually a sleeve. This is actually sleeveless. So you can switch out, switch these out. So you can have, if you take off the trench coat, you can actually then just have them in just a hoodie. Huh, that is really interesting about those cuts. I'll have to find out if anyone else has those. But uh, maybe it is supposed to be on series because like the sleeves here are torn. Just again, find it interesting. These don't have it. I'm just, I'm just being a nitpicking geek right now. I admit it completely. But um, I do like though you can have a full size hoodie. You can even put this on another figure if you wanted to. So that way, but uh, I mean, I like this trench coat because of the wiring. But again, you can keep that slacker look for it too. And he didn't have to put this in there. This was not a needed accessory. So, um, and you could probably have both the sleeveless and this on there, but I like this because it doesn't affect the articulation. I just switched him up here a little because one, I wanted to show off this articulation. I mean, look, he is doing a perfect superhero landing-esque pose right here. Better than any Iron Man figure I own, to be honest. I mean, yeah, I could I'm, the feet here could do a little bit of work on it. Um, I went ahead and I gave him the mace club here, and here I can get the trench coat billowing out. Um, I don't know if this guy's supposed to be like a shaman or something. I think I'm going to take a neat little photo of him, like, raising the street or something with some of my effect parts. But, like, this, this is cool. This is very cool. Just boom. Perfect landing right there. This is like literally the type of character someone would have if they were making like an urban Dungeons and Drag urban based Dungeons and Dragons game. You know, this is my uh, street sh street cleric, or in uh, if you ever played Shadowrun, a street uh, shaman. Like, which is again, I love this. It just it has so much personality. Oh yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Quick size comparison. We have Odius next to the. Uh, earlier reviewed La Muerta figure. I think they look really good. Um, I could totally see some kind of crossover with those guys. And here he is next to a Covert Ops Condor, which I, I, I it's too late for me to do a formal review, but damn, I, I love this figure. So, but, uh, so that's, he scales really, really, really well. I do recommend this figure. On many levels, um, this head, I, I'm trying to do the head pop. Okay, I, I have to say this, I'll be doing you an injustice here. Um, I tried popping the head out twice, I hit it with a hair dryer, and <laughs> the neck joint was pulling out with the head joint, because I really wanted to put this guy on here. So, um, or even this one. It's just, these, ah, these face sculpts are absolutely awesome, it's just, it's a shame that that's been been more of a challenge. I'll probably get it out there. Uh, keep an eye on my Instagram. I'm going to try to get some photos of this guy. Probably not for this review, but uh, just in general. So true star screamer at Inst at true star screamer on Instagram. But uh, I got mine, like I said, from Big Bad Toy Store. He's about ninety bucks. And if you're collecting Mezcos, if you're collecting these six inch soft good figures, I'm telling you now, it's you're going to feel the value to it. I don't feel the trepidance of a Mezco figure, while yes, it is thinner fabric, none of it restricts anything, which is great. Um, he's going to look absolutely awesome on a display. Okay, maybe a display stand would have been nice, but the amount of hands we're getting, those heads on here, this is absolutely on Mezco's par. It is absolutely keeping up with them. I think the only thing Mezco offers that these guys don't is the display stand and the little baggie, but eh, I got plenty of those. So, um, but let me know your thoughts down below. Are you picking him up? Do you already have him? Do you enjoy him? Uh, that's what the fun part of these, uh, these things are for. I've got stuff here to review. Absolutely. Um, keep your eye open. Keep your eye open on figure action every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time and the occasional reactions. Um, if you are new here, hit that like button. Well, if you're new, if, just if you're here, hit that like button. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. I have something awesome on the works for you subscribe for all subscribers. I kid you not. We're going to be doing a huge subscription drive 
And let me tell you, there's going to be a giveaway involved. And you guys might want to be on the vanguard of this assault. Read into it as you may. But uh, we definitely need to get some subscribers here for that to happen. If you want to be on, and you want to be on the vanguard of this subscription assault for the giveaway. <laughs> Thank you, G. Tony. Most importantly, though, no matter what, as always, until next time, take care. Peace.